Rob F. at the American Kickboxing Academy in San Jose, California, and I am here with Dave Camarillo, one of the coaches on the current season of The Ultimate Fighter. How are you doing? Dude, very good, very good. Thank you. First of all, I noticed that you're limping. Uh, what's going on there? I just rolled my ankle. I was doing uh, some modern army combatives training, and I was getting away from a knife, and it uh, didn't work out for me. Well, I, I guess you should be lucky you walked away with your leg. Right. Hopefully it's not broken. Hopefully I don't need surgery. Um, but uh, I can still coach. And I can still teach. That's, that's the important part. Uh, I came here to interview Sako, and I actually wanted to talk to you about that. I, I noticed Sako and Savak out there. Mm -hmm. uh, was that something that they approached you for, or did you approach them to, to come up to AKA? We talked to them during the show, um, but not specifically. I mean, we, we, we definitely had our favorites. I mean, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that. The harder workers, the guys are a little bit more mentally tough, the guys that put in the hours. English, we called them, was one of them as well. But, uh, uh, you know, our camp's kind of open to everybody. If you want to come down and, not everybody, but everybody on, our, on Team Koshek. Um, and they just took interest in that. And I, I spent a lot of time with, with Sako in particular, um, not so much with, with uh, Savak because he was injured, but, uh, you know, same thing with Nam Fam. I actually spent some time with him. And, and it was like my time was available as long as they wanted it. And the guys who wanted it are here right now. Talk to me about coaching uh, all of these fighters. They come from different backgrounds. They have different styles, a very diverse group. How do you coordinate something like that? It's difficult because it, it's something that I'm not used to. You know, when I first started, it was kind of like that, but that was seven years ago. You know, now I'm with like guys like John Fitch or, or Cain Velasquez, guys that I don't have to really, you know, get in tune with. We're in tune, you know. He knows exactly what I expect out of him out of the corner uh, during the fights, during the training camps. And, uh, uh, and, and with these guys, you, you first meet them, you got six weeks, and a lot of times you got a day to prepare for some guy that you've never seen before. Um, you do a quick little, you know, look at a video here and there. You look at the guy's attributes and you say, okay, simple commands. I don't want you on bottom or, you know, don't shoot or, you know, things like that. Like, for example, uh, you know, I definitely did not want, you know, Sako on bottom of, of, uh, of uh, Brookens when he fought him. You know, things like that they are pretty simple for a coach to see. But the thing is, it's like, you know, when he first came here, he was trying to get on page with us too, and it took some time. And now he's showing signs of, of listening to our instruction because you not not only to come and train. You know, he's not here just to train. He's here to get in tune with an elite camp, and there and there's a difference. Um, like for example, I'll be cornering him, and I, I expect him to utilize or, or put forth and execute the game plan we've been putting together for his fight. Um, but uh, that's a process. It takes time to get that kind of you know, uh, sense of rapport and, 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 and here's the plan, execute. That, that's not easy. I want to ask you about uh, Josh Koscheck and the consistent antagonizing that's been happening on the show of GSP's team and GSP himself. How much of that was for the camera? How much of that was for the show? And how much of it is actually part of the game plan to try to get under GSP's skin? You know what? I don't know. I don't ask Kost these things. It, you know, Kost is his own man. He can do whatever he wants and it doesn't bother me. I'm, I don't carry myself that way. Um, but, you know, I, I laugh at the show. If I watch the show, I laugh at it. I think a lot of people take it too seriously, which, which is fine. If you love the MMA and you love, love the show, you might take it more seriously than me. But the thing is, is when you lived it, it's very different than watching it on the show. It's almost like you're watching two different things. And, you know, of course, they catch every little thing that Koss would say against GSP. But uh, day to day, it was just kind of a joke. It was, it was not – I was laughing. It was just kind of trying to be all in fun. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever, it, it is what it is. W what I like about it is it's hyping the fight, not that it needed, but, you know, it's, it's becoming from a big fight to a huge fight, mm -hmm. you know, and I will not be wearing anything Koscheck related when I land in Montreal. Uh, speaking of Montreal, you potentially have the next welterweight champion. Mm -hmm. You already have the UFC heavyweight champion, and now you have potentially um, the next ultimate fighter. So lots of things going on, well, from that, that, that uh, right. was on your team. Right. Lots of things happening at AKA. Would, would you say that this is, uh, AKA is probably at their prime right now? Yeah, no, I think we're at our prime. I think that, that is, the coaching is good. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I know I'm a good coach, and I know I can always be better. Every single day I try to make myself a better coach. Um, but I, I learn from the best, Bob Cook, Javier Mendez. Uh, you know, we got a lot of good staff, but we have a lot of talent. You know, we started out with just a few fighters, uh, and I was the new jiu-jitsu coach coming in. I learned how to fight myself to be a, you know, a good fight coach, um, which was important for me personally. But, uh, yeah, things are coming together, and it's, it's important that uh, things that you work so hard on come to fruition, like, you know, the, like winning the title against Brock Lesnar was huge for us. 
Um, but my next uh, goal in life is, and I, I, like I said before, I will feel that it's a failure if I do not get uh, John Fitch a title shot. So, uh, you know, we have cost with the title shot. We want to win that title. Uh, you know, beyond that, it's, 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 it's John Fitch for me. It was just announced that his opponent for his next opponent in the, the UFC will be BJ Penn. Mm -hmm. Any reactions from from John Fitch or from you yourself on that announcement? You know, we're really excited. I think it's a great fight. You know, I've had history with BJ and I have a lot of respect for BJ. Um, in this case, it's business. Um, I'll corner John Fitch against anybody. You know what I mean? Uh, when it comes down to it. So there's no, uh, oh, you know, you had a relationship with BJ. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. You know, we're going to do what it takes to get John Fitch the title shot. And that's my next question to you. What do you think it is going to take? He's riding a, 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 an impressive win streak. What is it going to take? I have no uh, opinion anymore. I really don't. I think uh, management makes their decisions regardless of what's what's said or, or you know promised or whatever. That I don't. I, I just push that aside. We have a lot of hard work ahead of us. You know, we basically work for the UFC. You know, uh, I I do my best to make sure my guys are prepared. To, to get the UFC what they want, and that's that's our bottom line. Whatever Fitch needs to do in his next fights, next few fights, that, that gets him the title shot, that that's our job right now. One more question uh, before I go. I've been interviewing Nam Fan uh, during the season. Yes, I am a Twilight fan. One, I, one more time? I, yes, I am a Twilight fan. Are How, you leaving this interview now? or? <laughs> I just I just wanted uh, to clarify that. No, I'm a huge Twilight fan. I, I think it shows, for me personally, it shows a sense of confidence. You know, I've... I've we have a heavyweight champion, you know, that, you know, we just beat Brock Lesnar. Uh, we're fighting for the title again. Why can't I go watch Twilight? It's, it, look, and I'm not just saying that. It's, it's, a, it's a good show. Like, I like the, the movies. I saw the first movie with my wife, and it's not a situation where, like, Nam maybe thought that my wife drags me to it. No, I'm, I'm honestly saying I'm a Twilight fan, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a cool show to watch. What, what, what team do you pertain to? <laughs> team Edward. Hey, you know what? Some people watch Twilight. Yeah, what are you gonna do? I'm not gonna do anything. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes when I sit down, I cross my legs. I'm, what do you I'm do? I'm surprised he's still talking to me. But hey, that Thank shows a lot of maturity on your behalf. Thank you very <laughs> much. I appreciate it. Well, you know what? Uh, we're gonna end the interview right there. Uh, Rob F. and Dave Camarillo. Dave will be at uh, the Bell Center in Montreal on December 11th. He will be at the Ultimate Fighter finale as well, and he will be at the premiere of the next Twilight movie. Thanks so much for the time, Dave. <laughs> you, appreciate it. Thanks.